فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم وأخبر أن الذكر يبقى بجنة وينقطع التكليف حين يكل حين يخلد And he said that dhikr shall remain in Jannah while all other responsibilities cease in their eternal abode. The author now says, وَأَخْبَرَ Allah has informed us أَنَّ الذِّكْرَ يَبْقَى بِجَنَّةٍ That the remembrance of Allah is still going to remain and it will still carry on in Jannah. It's still going to carry on. That, this is another benefit of the remembrance of Allah. And now يَبْقَى فِي الْجَنَّةِ That this act of remembering Allah, exalting Him, praising Him, is something that's going to carry on. Even that the people of Jannah are just enjoying themselves. Al-Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim, both of them narrated. Min hadith Abi Huraira. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, the first patch of people who are going to enter paradise. The Prophet said, The Prophet specifically said that they are going to exalt Allah in the morning and in the evening. Taklif is disconnected as the author says, Taklif has gone. In Jannah, is there any person who is mukallaf in Jannah? Does he have to come with any acts of obedience? No. Does he have to stay from any, away from any prohibitions? No. None of that. But even then they are still exalting Allah in the morning and in the evening. This time, like in pay attention, they are doing it out of what? لَذَّةً وَهَنَاءَةً وَقُرَّةَ عَيْنٍ Out of joy. and in, in, They are enjoying it. As Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Saudi, rahimahullah, he said in his tafsir. He says when he came to the ayah, دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٌ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah says in this verse, Surah Yunus, Allah says their calling is سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٌ And their greeting is salam. So they are actually going to be there. Their speech is subhanallah. And their greeting is salam. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. They greet each other like that. Allah then says, Wa akhiru da'wahum. And their final calling is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Abdurrahman Nasr al Saudi says in his tafsir on this verse when he was commenting on it, A ibadatum fiha lillah. Their ibadah is all for Allah. وَأَوَّلُهَا تَسْبِيحُ لِلَّهِ The first thing they start with is what? Subhanallah. وَتَنْزِيهُ لَهُ عَنِ النَّقَائِسِ And they exalt him from any deficiency. وَآخِرُهَا تَحْمِيدُ لِلَّهِ And the last thing that they do is what? الحمد لله. وَالتَّكَالِيفُ تَكْلِيف has been uplifted from them. في دار الجزاء the day of judgment وإنما بقي لهم أكمل اللذات but what has remained for them is the completeness joy there is الذي هو ألذ عليهم من المآكل الذي that is more sweeter to them and more enjoyable to them than the greatest food that a person can enjoy and that is ألا وهو ذكر الله الذي تطمئن به القلوب and that is the remembrance of Allah in which the heart finds tranquility وَتَفْرَحُ بِهِ الْأَرْوَاحِ And the person's soul finds joy and happiness in. وَهُوَ لَهُمْ بِمَنْزِلَةِ النَّفْسِ So, وَهُوَ, وهو لَهُمْ بِمَنْزِلَةِ النَّفَسِ And the dhikr here is like breathing for them. Like that. مِنْ دُونِ كُلْفَةٍ وَمَشَقَّةٍ Without any hardship and without any burden of having to say it. That's not going to be taken away from them. Because their heart enjoyed it. They lived by it. They enjoyed it when they were in the dunya. Just like they enjoy food, and that you have, you want to, when you go generally you want to eat, right? You enjoy food, right? The dhikr is like that for them, so it's brought for them as well. 
it wasn't looked at as a taklif. It wasn't looked like as a burden. And it wasn't looked at as a hakamu taklifiyah. It was brought as though it was from things that they enjoyed. Naam. وَلَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي ذِكْرِهِ غَيْرَ أَنَّهُ طَرِيقٌ إِلَى حُبِّ الْإِلَاهِ وَمُرْشِدُ If there was nothing in his dhikr other than it being means being a means to the love of Allah and leading to that. The author there goes on to this, uh, uh, another benefit of remembrance of Allah. That the remembrance of Allah is from the greatest things al li mahabbatillahi that brings about Allah's love. If you increase in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is from the greatest things that you will gain through it. Mahabbatullahi li abdi. Allah's love to the slave. That's why Allah said in the ayah surah al-ma'idah, yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna. Allah loves them and they will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the remembrance of Allah and increasing in it is from the reasons to gain Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's love. And also Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala makes the slave love him as well. And Imam Ibn Al-Qayyib rahimahullah, he said in his kitab Al-Wabil Sayyib, he says, فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَنَالَ مَحَبَّةَ اللَّهِ Anyone who wants to gain Allah's love, Azza wa Jal, anyone who wants to gain Allah's love, you have to remember one thing. The matter is not you loving Allah. Many people say, I love Allah. The matter really isn't that you love Allah. The real truth of the matter is that Allah loves you in return. A man, methanin, loves a white woman, but she doesn't love him. He's not going to get anywhere. What's your love going to do now? Are you with me? The issue is when you love Allah and He loves you in return. So you love Him, you have to love Him. But you also work towards gaining Him loving you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Salaf, they used to say, لَيْسَ الشَّأْنَ أَن تُحِبْ The matter is not for you to love Allah. وَلَكِنَّ الشَّأْنَ أَن تُحَبْ But it's that you're loved in return. One of the things that brings about Allah's love to you as a slave is, as Ibn Qayyim says, فَلْيَلْهَجْ بِذِكْرِهِ To come with the remembrance of Allah. Is to what? Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sorry, to remember Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So he says, فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَنَالَ مَحَبَّةَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ Anyone who wants to gain the love of Allah, فَلْيَلْهَجْ بِذِكْرِهِ Let it echo from you and occur from you. His remembrance let it come from you. Now. وَيَنْهَ وَيَنْهَ الْفَتَى عَنْ عَنْ غِيبَةٍ وَنَمِيمَةٍ وَعَنْ كُلِّ قَوْلٍ وَعَنْ وَعَنْ كُلِّ قَوْلٍ لِلِّ وَعَنْ كُلِّ قَوْلٍ لِلْتِيَانَةِ مُفْسِدُ And dissuading an individual from ghiba and namima and every statement which would corrupt his religion. Another benefit that the author now mentions and it's fawa'idu dhikr the benefits of remembering Allah and that is the remembrance of Allah prevents a person, stops a person from backbiting and tail-bearing. By remembering Allah you are preoccupying your tongue from backbiting and tail bearing. The word ghiba means dhikrul insan. It is the person to mention akhahu fi ghibatihi bima yakrah. It is to say about your brother that which he dislikes. And namima means naqlu kalamin nasi. It is to what? Transmit the statements of people ba'dhum fi ba'dhin ala wajh al ifsadi wal waqi'ati baynahum. You, spe- you spread speech from one party or one person to another person and the intent behind it is to bring uh, corruption about or to bring about slander from one person to another. So ghiba and namima, both of them don't occur when the person is in a state of dhikr. 
it gets rid of it. That's one of the benefits. Because you're preoccupying yourself and busying yourself with what is more important. But as the Salaf used to say, anyone who does not preoccupy himself, then he is preoccupied. If you don't do the preoccupy, if you don't preoccupy your tongue, it will preoccupy you. This tongue is going to move. So you have a choice whether you're going to take control over it or will it take control over itself. And of course, if it takes control over itself, then it won't bring about good. ولذلك ابن القيم says in his kitab الوابل الصيب he says إن في الاش إن في الاشتغال بالذكر اشتغالا عن الكلام الباطل من الغيبة واللغو ومدح الناس وذمهم وغير ذلك فإن اللسان لا يسكت البتة فإما لسان ذاكر وإما لسان لاغ ولا بد من أحدهما في فهي النفس إن لم تشغلها بالحق شغلتك بالباطل and Ibn al-Qayyim says, Rahimahullah, busying yourself in the remembrance of Allah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Ibn al-Qayyim says, busying yourself in the remembrance of Allah is actually busying yourself from false and idle speech. Such as backbiting, praising the people all day, belittling the people, and other than that. He says, فَإِنَّ اللِّسَانَ لَا يَسْكُتُ الْبَتَّدَ The tongue doesn't become silent and it will never become quiet. فَإِمَّا لِسَانُ ذَاكِرٍ It's either a tongue that's remembering Allah, وَإِمَّا لِسَانُ لَاكِرٍ Or it's a tongue that is free, disobeying Allah by not remembering Him. وَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا So one of them is going to happen. One of them is going to happen. And he goes on to say, إِلَّمْ تَشْغِلُهُ بِالذِّكْرِ If you don't preoccupy it and busy it with the remembrance of Allah, شَغَلَكَ بِاللَّهُ بِاللَّهُ It will busy you with what? Idle speech. Then he goes on to say, وَمَا هُوَ عَلَيْكَ وَلَا بُدَّ وَمَا هُوَ عَلَيْكَ وَلَا بُدَّ فَاقْتَلْ لِنَفْسِكَ إِحْدَ الْخَطَّتَيْنِ أَمَا خُطَّتَيْنِ وَأَنزِلْهَا فِي إِحَدِ الْمَنْزِلَتَيْنِ Choose for yourself which of those two paths that you want to take. And place yourself in one of those stations. Meaning, choose which one you want your tongue to do. And then, what we take from this is this line of poetry of the author is that the benefits that dhikr has is that it protects the person and it stops him from speech that is bad, such as backbiting, tail-bearing, and vulgar speech. نعم لكان لكان لنا حظ عظيم ورغبة بكثرة ذكر الله نعم الموحد Then we would have a tremendous share and a strong desire to establish dhikr of Allah in abundance how perfect is he the unique This now the statement لكان لنا حظ عظيم is a jawab shart. It's a response to the condition that was mentioned previously by the author, which is what? Walaw lam yakun fi dhikri ghayra annahu. So that was, walaw is, law is what? This is law shartiya, right? It's a condition. And the response to that is, lakana lana hadhun adhimun. We would have had, so the author is trying to say here is that if we didn't have any benefit in the remembrance of Allah, Accept the fact that it will reach us to Allah's love. Are you there? And protect the slave from vulgar speech. Words that are in disobedience of Allah. It would have been for us a great portion. Are you with me? وَرَقْبَةٌ and desire بِكَثْرَةِ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ In increasing the remembrance of Allah. نِعْمَ الْمُوَحَّدُ Greatness is singling him, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, in religion and in worship. Does that make sense to you all? So, لَكَانَ لَنَا حَظٌ عَظِيمٌ وَرَغْبَةٌ is the response that if the remembrance of Allah didn't have any other benefits, except the fact that it could do what for us, that it could protect us, so it, so it can give us the love of Allah, which is what he mentioned, and also that it can protect us from what? Idle speech. And 
words that disobey Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, if he didn't have any of that except that, لَكَانَ لَنَا حَظٌ This is where the response is. لَكَانَ لَنَا حَظٌ عَظِيمٌ وَرَغْبَةٌ In that situation, then it would have been for us a great portion and a great desire in increasing the remembrance of Allah. Great is what? To single Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in worship. So this is powerful. If dhikr had no other benefits, all the other fawais that we mentioned, if we forget it, and we just think of these two, which is, it brings about Allah's love for us, and it protects our tongue, then that's enough. That's enough for something to cry for, and to die for, and something to strive to, and something to desire. In what? بِكَثْرَةِ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ In increasing in the remembrance of Allah. Ni'mah blesses what? Great is what? Al-Muhadu. The one who... Ibadah is done alone for. The religion has been done for him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now. Walakinna min jahlina qalla dhikruna kama qalla minna lil ilahi ta'abudu. Lil ilahi ta'abudu. Lil ilahi ta'abudu. Lil ilahi ta'abudu. However, due to our ignorance, our dhikr is little and similarly our worship of Allah falls short. The author here, rahimahullah, he says, وَلَكِنَّنَا مِنْ جَهْلِنَا قَلَّ ذِكْرُنَا Due to our ignorance and our lack of knowledge, our dhikr has become little. So what reason did the author mention why people's remembrance of Allah becomes little? Jahal. But if the person, if the light of knowledge came and it shone on you, and you knew, and you came to know the benefits of dhikr and the fruits that you gained from it, wallahi, by through that what would have happened? it would have been a support for you and it would have pushed you in remembering Allah wa ta'ala and increasing in his remembrance. Many of you might now say to yourself, I didn't know all of this, subhanAllah. This was a wake-up call for me. By looking at this, Allah, I have to increase in the remembrance of Allah because what has removed from you is the ignorance that was there. And knowledge has come in, so it would affect your actions in the upcoming future. Then the author goes on to say, كَمَا قَلَّ مِنَّا لِلْإِلَهِ التَّعَبُّدُ As it has also become less in, it has become little when it comes to worshipping Allah. We're also short in worshipping Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And why, why is the reason to that? The same reason why our remembrance of Allah is also little, which is ignorance and lack of knowledge. And if you look at the usloob and the method which the author has taken, ya ikhwa, if we observe, Uslubu Shaykh al-Rafi' The amazing method and the amazing way he's talking It teaches us how he was humble Tawadu al-Jam The humility and the humbleness of the author Wa husnu khutabihi And the way he addressed the matter What did he differ between? He didn't say Walakinnakum min jahlikum that would mean that he's talking to the people and he has taken himself out of the equation. Whereas here he says, وَلَكِنَّنَا مِنْ جَهْلِنَا us, All of us. And this is a form that is important. That when you speak to the people, you do not speak to them as me and you all. Put yourself on a pedestal and you know, you're know you high up there and everyone else is lower than you. This is not the matter. You could be worse than the people. And that's what the author is reminding us. Our remembrance of Allah has become less because of our ignorance. Wallahi, Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Saudi rahimahullah was not a person whose remembrance was little. Kalla, wallahi, was not. Anyone who read his biography will know that. Anyone who read his biography will know that. He was an individual known for having excessive remembrance of Allah on his tongue. But the righteous person never sees their actions as to be something big. And they don't see themselves to be something big. So this is tawadu, humility and humbleness 
that a person needs to have and that a person has to have with them and this is when Allah raises a person that's why the Prophet said anyone who humbles himself for Allah ma tawada ahadun lillah there's not a person who humbles himself for Allah illa rafa'ahu except Allah lifts him whenever you humble yourself and you Allah raises you Allah puts you up and the opposite is truth no one puts himself big and strong and tough like that except Allah humiliates him subhanahu wa ta'ala so what have we taken how many benefits have we taken from the dhikr who can tell me how much fawaid that we took from the dhikr uh, yeah how much did we mention uh, you guys wouldn't yeah uh, wouldn't know no one's writing if you do write you don't note it down you don't these are important things uh 13 he mentioned the author mentioned 13 fa'ida min fawaid dhikr i deliberately chose not to mention them so i can ask at the ending 13 benefits the author mentioned from the benefits of dhikr there are anybody anyone wants to go further into this and see more more benefits then go read the kitab al-wabil al-sayyib written by ibn al-qayyim he reads he mentions up to 70 i think up nearly up to 100. then the author says after that فَمَا خَابَ عَبْدٌ لِلْمُهِيمِنِ يَقْصِدُ لِلْمُهِيمِنِ يَقْصِدُ Hence, beseech your Lord for guidance and success always, as no servant suffers loss when he beseeched Al-Muhayyim, the all-acquainted watcher. The author says, وَسَرْ رَبَّكَ التَّوْفِيقَ وَالْفَوْزَ دَائِمًا Ask your Lord. Ask him for what? So first of all, kun be a person su'al. Always be a person who supplicates. Akthir min dua Be a person who is long and large in his dua and supplication. Ya ikhwa, we need to come with the characteristics of al-ilhah. Ilhah means consistent dua that doesn't stop. Asking Allah for what? At-tawfiq wal fawz Tawfiq means giving us the ability. And foes means giving us success after we have come with the action. Acceptance of the action. Tawfiq means Allah ila nafsik. You're always asking Allah that He doesn't leave you to yourself. You're the biggest enemy to yourself. You don't want that. You want your affairs to be in His hand. Nasiyati biyadik. My affairs is in your hand. Oh Allah, don't put my affairs in anyone else's house hand. I want you to run my affairs because there's no one who can run your affairs better than him. Can there? No. So when you ask for tawfiq, it means, oh Allah, run my affairs. Don't give it to anybody, not even me. Because when Allah does that, what is he going to help you on? Masalih dinika wa dunyak. Your worldly benefits and your hereafter benefits. It all will be done for you. So tawfiq is the opposite of what? Al khudlan. Humiliation. Allah belittling you. Humiliation occurs. When your affairs is not run by the creator, the sustainer, and the provider. When it's not run by him, it's when it becomes khudlan, you're humiliated. But tawfiq is the opposite, is when Allah is running your affairs. You see? Then, and the other word that's used, which is al-fawz. Fawz means husul al-ribh, is to gain profit. Wanafyul khasara, and not to get loss, and not to gain loss. So, O oh Allah, make us successful and prosperous. Da'iman always. Always. فَمَا خَابَ Then the author says, فَمَا خَابَ عَبْدُ لِلْمُهَيْمِنِ يَقْصِدُ He is not in a state of loss. He is not a humiliated person. And he is not in a state of loss and bankruptcy. The one who supplicates to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Because Allah does not reject the one who calls on to him. And Allah is the one who said himself, Also Allah says, 
إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخلين Allah says if my slave asks me I'm very close I accept the supplication of the one who is calling on to me so ask from me I will give you what you ask me for believe in me through it will come to you guidance inshallah ta'ala also Allah says وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِيبَ لَكُمْ Say to them وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ Your Lord has said to you Udu'uni, ask me أَسْتَجِيبَ لَكُمْ I will accept your dua from you إِنَّ الَّذِينَ those verily who are يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي They are stubborn and they are arrogant from asking of me They will enter Jahannam then the author says, وَصَلِّ إِلَٰهِ مَعْ سَلَامٍ وَرَحْمَةٍ عَلَىٰ خَيْرِ مَنْ قَدْ كَانَ لِلْخَلْقِ يُرْشِدُ وَآلٍ وَأَصْحَابٍ وَمَنْ كَانَ تَابِعًا صَلَاةً وَتَسْلِيمًا يَدُومُ وَيَخْلُدُ Send your salah, O Allah, and salam on mercy upon the best of all who guided creation and upon his family, companions, and all who follow continuous sal- salah and salam ever- everlasting. So the author says, وَصَلِّ إِلَٰهِ مَعْ سَلَامٍ وَرَحْمَةٍ عَلَىٰ خَيْرِ مَنْ قَدْ كَانَ لِلْحَقِّ يُرْشِدُ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's salutation and peace be upon who? Safwati al-Khalqi, the purest of creation. Imam al-Huda, the leader of guidance. Sayyidul Awwalina wal Akhirin, the master of those who came and those to come. Wa khayru man kana lil haqi yarshudu. And the best one who cre- who guided mankind. Who is it? Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's the characteristics of the ulama. When they finish, they always mention the salah as well at the ending of their lines of poetry. And then the author said after that وَآلٍ وَأَصْحَابٍ وَمَنْ كَانَ تَابِعًا صَلَاةً وَتَسْلِيمًا يَدُومُ وَيَخْلُدُ And also may peace and salutation be on who? The companions of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم وَمَنْ كَانَ تَابِعًا means and those who also follow them which is us inshallah ta'ala بِإِحْسَانٍ in good صَلَاةً salutation وتسليما and peace be upon them يدوم ويخلد ما معنى يدوم ويخلد دائمين مستمرين that will forever carry on and will never end and inshallah ta'ala we will stop this uh, beneficial lines of poetry authored by this great noble imam Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Saudi Allahumma maghfir lahu aw Allah bestow your forgiveness on him warhamhu and have mercy on him wa askinhu wa ask wa askinhu and our Allah tabarak wa ta'ala reside him in Jannat al naim And also may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings and our mistakes. And also may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make us those who take on this knowledge and benefit from it. And also benefit those who are around us. Any mistakes or shortcomings that I have said or probably said, then it's from me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.